Hey guys, it's Andy Chamberlain back with another video and today we're talking about dissonance. So what is dissonance? Dissonance has a lot of definitions, but I'll start by just showing you a practical example. This is dissonant and this is consonant. So consonant and dissonant are kind of opposites of each other. Now, while it's easy to say that there are just dissonant intervals and consonant intervals, it's really more of a scale, kind of like lightness and darkness. You can have something that's really light, and that means it's not very dark, and I guess you could have something that's perfectly light or dark, but you normally have some of both, so that's more or less how consonance and dissonance works. But, let's get technical. What actually causes dissonance? Why is this so much more ugly than this? Well, as you know, each pitch or note has a frequency assigned to it. In Western music, uh, in modern Western music, it's all based off of A440. This A is 440 hertz. Hertz means cycles per second. So the note oscillates at 440 times a second. Going up an octave doubles the hertz, so we've got 880 and then 220, 110, etc., right? Now, when two notes are played at once, their frequencies start to oscillate between constructive and destructive. So, constructive waves are waves that overlap, and destructive waves do the opposite. The way sound actually works in real life, the way it would look if you could see air, is compressed air followed by expanded air, followed by compressed, expanded over and over. How many times uh, the air oscillates between each compression is the frequency of the sound that you hear. Now, let's look at a little a sine wave. Now, if the if the speaker is here, that means the speaker is back, and that means that the air is expanded. If the speaker is here, it's at high pressure, and the speaker is forward. Okay. So let's look at constructive and destructive. So, as you can see with the constructive guy. We've got the two waves, they're overlapping, they're both, both of the sounds are at high pressure at this point, which means their high pressure will add together, and you get a louder sound then. And then, when it gets to destructive, you've got a high pressure for one sound, but a low pressure for the other sound, and they uh, almost completely cancel out. Now, the thing is that when you have two different pitches, this uh, destructive versus constructive oscillates. So you get an oscillation between the two frequencies being constructive and destructive, and that gives you another pitch, an undertone, and that is where dissonance comes from. So let's look at how uh, this works with some examples. So let's take 220 and 440 hertz. Here we go. So conveniently, the math figures that we simply subtract the two frequencies to get the frequency of the oscillation between constructive and destructive. Um, I guess we can call that the dissonance frequency. The first dissonance frequency, as you'll soon see. So, in this case, our phantom frequency, uh, our dissonance frequency, whatever, is 220 hertz, because 440 minus 220 is 220. So, 220 is a note that we're already playing, so we don't add another note at all so there's actually no dissonance. This is the only purely consonant interval. There's no dissonance at all in an octave. But let's look at a fifth. So this is a fifth. We've got 440 and 660 hertz almost exactly. It's not exactly 660 because this is equal tempered. And if you don't know all about that, you can check that out. There's a minute physics video that I'll link in the description on that. Pretty cool stuff. But um, let's look at the dissonance under this. So the difference here is 220 hertz, right? 660 minus 440. So we have to add that note. And now we have to find the difference between this note and this note and this note and this note. It ends up just repeating some of the notes that we're already playing. So then you get one note of dissonance for a fifth. Now let's go to a fourth. Now we have 880 and 660 again a 220 difference so we get the 220 down here and then uh, we find the difference between that and this so 220 and 660 difference is 440 there you go and then it ends up when you do all the rest of the uh, addition and subtraction it ends up with those notes 
Um, and then you, you can keep on doing that, and essentially the more notes you end up adding, the more dissonant that original interval was. Now, an interesting thing is that the, the harmonic series, some of you might know what that is, it's um, basically the, the pitch, the fundamental pitch, and then two times the pitch, three times the pitch, four times, etc. So it basically goes like this, one time, two time, three, four, five, six, the seven times is not actually a note in the Western scale. The way that these dissonant uh, pitches end up working out is that they are the harmonic series leading up to the original, uh, the original interval. So if you saw like we do the fourth, that's the harmonic series that stops after you complete that fourth. And if you do it for a third, it's gonna do this. It's the harmonic series, but kind of reversed. So that's pretty interesting, I think. Um, but yeah, the more notes that you kind of add below it, the more dissonance. So with this thing, you've got like seven notes below it. So one last thing, what about these guys, right? The note's still pretty far away, but it's not that dissonant. Well, the reason is, first of all, if you try to do all the differencing um, the differencing method, then you would find that there are a lot of notes you'd end up with. The other way of looking at it is the harmonic series of this note, the first, the, well, I guess the second harmonic is this note, which is a half step. So that's kind of why that's still super dissonant. Um, so yeah, uh, there you go, some theory behind dissonance. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week.